Okay. Well, I think, uh, thanks to everyone for being here today um, to discuss how the United States and our allies can transfer billions of dollars of frozen Russian sovereign assets to help in the effort in the war in Ukraine. It's very timely. I, I just got back from the White House in a situation room talking about an emergency national security uh, aid supplemental package. Uh, that would include um, include Israel funding, which is desperately needed, um, Ukraine. It would also include Indo-Pacific and uh, the border. Now, these are dangerous times. I don't need to tell anybody in this room that fact uh, when Hamas invaded Israel last week. Um, between the Hamas-Israel war, the throwing, uh, growing threat of the CCP around the world, uh, particularly the uh, Pacific and the South China Sea, uh, we can't lose our focus on Ukraine, the largest invasion in Europe since World War II. I've been critical of the Biden administration for being weak, leading from behind, slow, rolling the weapons necessary for Ukraine to win. I've been pushing for the attackers. We met with Zelensky just uh, two weeks ago, and I said, what do you need? He said, I need the long-range artillery. I can't hit the Iranian drones in Crimea without the longer-range artillery. Uh, I don't know why that decision is so difficult. And, you know, you have the NSC blaming the DOD, the DOD blaming others. The fact is, they can win this thing if we gave them what they needed. And I, I, I agree with Colin Powell, you either go all in or you get out. And we ought to be going all in for victory. And I know on my side of the aisle, they want a path to victory, an administration that can win. We don't like losing. The American people don't like losing. We like to win. And we can't hold the political will of the American people if we have a failing program and a mismanaged war. And they don't want to bear the burden of this cost as Europe is not living up to its commitment. Now, some NATO countries are, and they are stepping up to the plate, but there are still others that are not. This uh, administration's commitment to supporting Ukraine is, quote, for as long as it takes. My response immediately was it shouldn't take that long, and that's not a strategy. We want victory as soon as possible. We need to know that the burden is going to be shared. And not only must Europe continue to provide Ukraine more non-security assistance than the United States provides, but also the Russian sovereign assets is a winner, in my judgment. If we can tap into the, the, the very people who started this war and this conflict, in my judgment, should be paying for the cost and not as much the U.S. taxpayer. And that's why I introduced the Repo Act, the bipartisan, bicameral legislation that demands that the Biden administration transfer frozen Russian sovereign assets to the Ukraine effort. It's beyond time that Russia pay for the war that it created. My bill prohibits the Biden administration from unfreezing Russian sovereign assets until Russia ends its unprovoked war of aggression and agrees to compensate Ukraine for the damages it has inflicted. The administration's disastrous $6 billion payment for Iran as part of a hostage deal with the Ayatollah exposed their unwillingness, or their willingness, I should say, to trade away billions of dollars in negotiations with our adversaries. And that's why I introduced a bill this month to permanently freeze the $6 billion of Iranian funds covered under the hostage deal through secondary sanctions. We must ensure these funds remain out of the hands of Iran and out of the hands of terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah. We cannot allow Biden to green light the return of Russian sovereign assets to Putin and the Russian war machine. To be clear, the war crimes and genocide committed by Russia cannot be reversed by money alone. Murdered innocent civilians included women and children they can't be brought back, and the trauma of the war will never be forgotten. But critical infrastructure, homes, towns, and businesses 
can be rebuilt. I hope we get to a reconstruction phase. I hope this conflict can be resolved. And along with our European and G7 allies, we hold as much as $300 billion of Russian funds that can be used for not only Ukraine's recovery and reconstruction, but also immediate economic and humanitarian assistance. Importantly, taking this action would be deter, be a deterrence to other would-be aggressors with a clear message. The financial systems of the G7 and EU will be closed off to those who violate another nation's sovereignty. Chairman Xi needs to see the free world has the will and the fortitude to ensure bullies cannot act with impunity. Transferring Russian sovereign assets is not just the morally right thing to do, it's strategically the right thing to do. It's also the fiscally responsible thing to do on behalf of our constituents. Putin causes devastation, and in my judgment, Putin must pay for it. That's what this bill is all about. I want to thank the members for being here on this very important topic, as if we ever get a speaker back in the chair, this is going to be one of the first items on the agenda in our national security interest to fund, to defend Israel, to defend Ukraine from aggression, to defend our borders, and to defend Taiwan. And with that, I'd like to recognize the ranking member pro tem, I should say, Ms. Marcy Kepner. <laughs>